Have you ever wondered, what exactly is an animal? I mean, what do you have in common with a cuttlefish? Or something as strange as a sea urchin? Or something more familiar like an elk? Well, it turns out that all animals have certain features they share in common. And the reason why we all share these things in common is because we have common ancestry dating back over 600 million years. Let's take a closer look at what these shared features are to make us all animals. One of the first characteristics of animals is that we are multicellular heterotrophs that feed by ingestion. Now let's take a step back. That was a lot of words. Multicellular. All that really means is we're made up of a lot of different cells. Heterotrophs. Well, hetero means other and troph means feeding. So we're other feeders. That means we have to acquire food from our environment. We're not like a plant. We can't get energy from sunlight and use that to put carbon dioxide and water together to make sugars. No, we actually have to get food from our environment, mostly from the foods we eat. And animals feed by ingestion. That means we actually eat it. We consume it and we have a way to digest that food. And that is different. Things like a mushroom. They are also a multicellular heterotroph but they feed by absorption, whereas animals, we eat our food. Second, animals have germ layers. No, not the kind of germs you think of that cause diseases, but actual germ layers derived from an embryo. These three germ layers include the ectoderm. This is the outermost layer that includes your skin and parts of your nervous system. The middle layer is called the mesoderm. And this includes your muscle cells, cardiac muscle, and your red blood cells. The endoderm forms the innermost layer. This includes your esophagus, your stomach, and your intestines. A third characteristic of animals is they have symmetry. You and I are most familiar with bilateral symmetry, like this elk. We've got a right side, a left side, a top, a bottom, a front, and a back. But there's another type of symmetry, and that is radial symmetry that you would find in like a jellyfish or a sea anemone called cnidarians. You could cut them in half in any way, and you'll get the same on each side. Now typically, if you have two germ layers, you have radial symmetry. You have an endoderm and an ectoderm, an outer and an inner layer. Whereas if you have bilateral symmetry, most animals with bilateral symmetry have all three germ layers. The ectoderm, which is the outer layer, the mesoderm, which is the middle layer, and the endoderm, which is the innermost layer. A fourth characteristic of animals are muscles. Animals move around and they use muscles to do that. And of course, here's a nice image of Arnold Schwarzenegger as Conan the Barbarian an early 80s film, one of my favorites. Not very family friendly though, so be warned. But we're really familiar with how muscles work on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's a video of my dog playing a catch in the backyard. I think he dreams about this at night. And lastly, animals have a nervous system. And that nervous system does several things. One, is it coordinates the movement of all your muscles. And two, it also coordinates all your sensory inputs as well. That's why we have most of our senses, like eyes, nose, ears, on our face, because we encounter the world head first. And it uses those sensory inputs, and then we respond to it based on that, on our senses. Well, there you have it. These are the main characters of all animals. We are multicellular heterotrophs that feed by ingestion. Basically, we eat through our mouth, it goes into our digestive tract, and it gets digested and absorbed. We have true germ layers, we have symmetry, whether it's radial or bilateral symmetry, and we have muscles coordinated by a nervous system. Animals go back to a common ancestor to the Proterozoic, and that common ancestor lived at least 600 million years ago, maybe even longer than that. Today, we have about 1.5 million species that have been described. However, estimates put that closer to 2 and 8 million species. That means there's a lot out there yet to be discovered. Most modern phyla, which include echinoderms, chordates, they evolved during the Cambrian between 542 million years ago and 485 million years ago. 
And of course, most of us know that the longest animal on the planet is a great blue whale. It's 110 feet long at 190 tons. And at the exact extreme opposite of that are these tiny little crustaceans that are 0.3 millimeters in length. They are tiny. So animals span an enormous magnitude in size. Now this brings me to my next point. Now I was taught in my very first biology class that sponges are animals. And in fact, I think we've been teaching this to budding biologists and non-majors for over a hundred years. But I've come to really question that. I'm not so sure that a sponge is actually an animal. They are clearly related to animals. They are multicellular heterotrophs and they do have to eat food. However, they lack several things that I think are important for being animals. They don't have real germ layers. They don't have symmetry based on those germ layers. And probably most importantly, they do not have muscles coordinated by a nervous system to allow them to move around. So there you have it. I'm not so sure that we should actually consider sponges to be animals.